so that's what I don't understand. There are certain note investors that strategies are um, pulling the, the notes together and selling them to a larger, larger investor. There's those guys. So those guys really care about the borrower. They want a borrower that can perform. So they're going to be really critical of the borrower's credit, of their down payment, of their commitment to the property on the amount of time that it's seasoned. You know what I mean? On how long it's actually seasoned. They're going to want a season note. So they're going to be really critical of the borrower. Um, that's one note investor. Another note investor is an equity note investor. So in other words, they're going to come in. They're going to look at the out the 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 mortgage what hasn't been paid off and they're going to look at the value of the land right, right. so the paper might only be worth a hundred thousand or face value of the paper might be a hundred thousand but the land might be worth three hundred thousand they're wanting that buyer to default right. right so they don't care as much about getting a discount on the note as they do the value of the collateral they only care about the value of the collateral so they're going to be more critical of the collateral. They're going to be more critical of the value of the collateral. They're going to underwrite that really hard. So their underwriting is going to be more on the collateral versus versus the borrower. They're going to hope that the borrower defaults. When when COVID first started and, and everybody was spending all their time on Clubhouse, there was a couple ladies that I listened to that were just note investors, uh, a bunch. And they were they had a play where all they did was go after properties that were in default already. They were looking for the ones that were in default, and they were constantly scanning the MLS to see that you know how originating house note that the original note was two hundred thousand dollars that they're buying for twenty or thirty cents on the dollar, but stuff in that neighborhood is now selling for five hundred thousand dollars. They were they were targeting those and yep. just making that educated dice roll every time. Maybe that's a non-performing note. Non-performing yep. notes. Um, there's a huge segment of investors out there that do buy non-performing notes. I'm talking about selling a performing note. We've sold non-performing notes. They, they actually did really well for us. It's crazy that people bought them. I was shocked at how many people bought them because um, it was just, to me, it's garbage paper. You know what I mean? It was like, we don't, the only reason we even listed them is because we didn't have time to go foreclose and right. go through the foreclosure process. We're like, let's just throw them on paper stack as a non-performing note and see what somebody will give. We would have sold them for a dollar just to not have to go through the headache of foreclosing on that. And people bid them up um, way overpaid for them, in my opinion. Um, and now they now they got a house in Coleman, Texas, and all they did was owner finance it again. So they went and originated. They foreclosed. They got the property, and they originated some good paper. Right. And, and they hit a lick. What you're talking about is they're selling them, you know, in a hot market. You know, the problem with 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 being a, a non-performing note investor in a hot market like that is that person can always sell. Does that make sense? Yes. So so you buy the note, you buy a non-performing note, you still got to get a discount on it because that person can sell. And next thing you know, you're getting a payoff request and you just paid face value for a non-performing note because it had a bunch of equity. And you're just going to have to give the payoff of – right the face value of the note and, you know, maybe some fees and stuff, but where's, where's the ROI come from? Right. There is none. You didn't grow your money at all. Matter of fact, by the time you pay wiring fees and everything else, you might've lost money. So well, just the not having your money turned in somewhere else loses you money. Yeah. Opportunity cost is in there, but, um, so note investing, very, 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 um, interesting, but you know, uh, originating that paper and selling it is a huge, huge um, investment strategy for us right now in this current economy. 